Okay. So, now let us move to um, move to the next segment. So, we by far we have discussed body parts, kinship terms and personal pronouns and the related generalizations. And we have seen the complexity and the simplicity that involves the semantic and the morphological domains for all the three things. Now, we are going to look for um, something quantitative. So, the idea here is that how many how many words does a particular language have or how many morphemes would a particular word require to be considered as a word. So, either of the ways. So, now uh, we are going to figure out the grammatical number, the number distinction like 1, 2, 3, 4. So, these kind of uh, uh, these kind of uh, distinction um, does it really provide any kind of quantitative information about the entities or, or we are when we say singular versus plural. So, obviously, we are focusing on the quantitative entities. So, what sort of information or what sort of typological generalization we can draw on the basis of um, of the kind of words or the on the basis of the kind of uh, kind of plural singular distinction that we have ok. Almost so one thing you need to remember here almost all languages have special words for more precise quantitative specification that is called numerals ok. So, you need to remember um, this term. So, what is a numeral precise quantitative specification. So, 1, 2, um, let us say 33, 34, so um, things like this ok or sorry. So, um, things like this it is going to be um, th these are the these are the precise quantitative specification and we call them numerals ok. 500, 10,000 all of this these are the examples of the numerals. So, now what we are going to do we are going to take a look how these words resemble and differ from each other. So, I will give you um, as I generally do I will give you the examples of English first and we will see what is uh, how we are going to relate or how we how we are going to talk about um, words from the other languages. So, I am going to write a few things here uh, this is again English data that I am going to discuss. So, let us say I um, will give you examples of 1, 2, 3, um, then 4 and 5. Let us look at this list. So, uh, from 1 we can have 11, from 2 we can have 12, from 3 we can have 13, from 4 we can have 14 and from 5 we can have 15 right. Then 11 um, uh, with 1 we can have 21, from 12 we can have or, or sorry uh, something uh, in relation with 21 we can also have 106 for that matter 106. So, let us look at the examples given over here. So, what does this list suggest? So, the su this list suggests the numbers can be constructed in how many ways? Two ways ok. There are two ways of number construction ok. So, what are these two ways of look at this um, list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 then the third list is 21, 106 words like that. So, what are these two ways by which the numbers can be um, can be constructed? First, the number can have an atomic or monomorphic name. So, first one is going to be atomic. Atomic means there cannot be no there, there cannot be any other division. So, um, either you call it atomic or you call it mono um, monomorphic. Okay. This is one way which which column should uh, substantiate which column data can be substantiated by this the first column 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 you cannot divide it. So, this is atomic or the monomorphic. The second one is what? Second one could be polymorphic and which is composed of other numerals polymorphic and they are constructed by 
or the numerals. So, these are the two ways by which the lexicon of the lexicon uh, or the lexical typology or the or, or, or I can say lexicon of number system uh, works. Okay. So, uh, what are the atomic ones? The atomic ones are um, the first column, the, the depending on the other numerals or the polymorphic ones are the second and the third column, right. So, 13, 14, 19 are not clearly separable into morphemes, but they suggest components such as 3, 4, 9, 10, so like that. So, when you say 2 and 12, 12 is not really um, like it does not really consist of separate morphemes, but 12 does give us an idea that it might be it might have some connection with the word 2. Similarly, when we say 13, 13 cannot be divided, it, it you cannot call it a polymorphic one definitely it is monomorphic, but it does have certain um, letters which give us an idea that this might have some connection with 3. So, that is why it is 3, 13, 2, 12 and 1, 11, right. So, uh, but the other the other side of the story is that that the third category when you say 32, 106, so these are clearly polymorphic, right. So, there are three different types you see over here, one is purely monomorphic like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, one is purely polymorphic like 21, 106, then there is a third category which is in the middle, they are not clearly polymorphic, you can see that they are, mo they are monomorphic, but they would give you some idea about um, the words that denote some other numerals. So, 14 might have some connection with 4, 15 might have some connection with 5, so that is how lexically um, the number system can be uh, can be put under or can be categorized. So, when I say lexical typology, then we need to find out what are the different lexical types that we have. So, as far as the number system is concerned, these are the three different types. One is purely polymorphic, one is purely monomorphic, the middle one is monomorphic, yet it would give you some information, some idea about how it has happened or what it has been derived from in case there has been some abstract derivation. Okay? So, that is one way of uh, um, finding out or one way of uh, one way of identifying the monomorphic versus polymorphic numerals. So, um, and, and with this information let us just see um, if there are polymorphic numerals what are the components. So, this is another thing that I want you to understand. So, uh, here I will write this is components of polymorphic numerals ok. So, let us see how it goes. So, the polymorphic numerals will have 4 plus 1, so that is going to be 41 something like that right. So, there are I am going to write uh, write some French data here, I cannot read it well, but I can uh, like I uh, my pronunciation is going to be weird, but then we can give you some data. So, for French we have if we write 4 then the spelling should be a ok, this is 4, this is 10, this is 20 ok, yeah um, and let us say the English one for English how we, this is the French data, let us have some English data also and in English data it is going to be when we say 41 that is going that is primarily 4 plus 1, um, 2 times 4 um, or let us say um, or let us say Oh, sorry. Um, then we have there is a, there is a language methylon, right? So this is the methy data methylon. Okay. So this one is two is uni, right? And twenty. Okay. 
20 for methylen is ok. Let me write it here. This is let us say methylen here 2 is honey then 20 is kun ok and uh, then there is another language oxap min oxap min ok. So, I told you this course is going to give you a few uh, names for for um, as far as the world's languages are concerned. So, one uh, here is tipun, Th so that will be thumb, that means thumb, that is one. Then uh, 12, this is an interesting language, 12 means nat, that means um, your ear, ok. Let us analyze this data, these three, so how, how our question is, what if there are if there are words for numbers, so how do we uh, f how do we frame or how do we get the uh, get such words for such numbers? Okay. Um, in English, forty-one is mainly known as four plus one. Instead of saying four plus one, we simply say forty-one, which is a polymorphic word. Two times four, so two times four mainly forty-four, right? So when instead of saying uh, 2 times 4, we simply write 44. So, that is one way of writing the numbers as, as in English. In French, um, there are absolutely monomorphic words 4, 10, 20, they do not, uh, it is apparently they do not um, really depend on any other word and they are monomorphic. In a language like Methylen, 2 is uni, 20 is only 20 is kun, so I do not see there would be any relation. However, an interesting language oxap, oxap min, you look at this, they have a lot of numbers corresponding to the body parts. So, then the number 1 or the numeral 1 stands for the thumb and that is thai pun, thi pun, whatever. And the number or the digit 12 or the, or the numeral 12 stands for the year. So, each of your body part will have a certain uh, number. So, I am not sure if I have the um, picture over here, I do not think I have ok. So, if you check Morapsik's book, um, there is a there is an interesting picture where Oxapmin, the speakers for each of the body parts they have a number. So, one for, for, a, for, a, for an Oxap, Oxapmin uh, a speaker, the number, the counting or the numeral system starts from the thumb, ok. So, thumb this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5, this is 6, this is 7, this is 8, this is 9 and this is 10. So, from this part to this part, all of this like each of the, um, each of the individual body part would be represented with a number. So, that means if you say 1, 1 means this like the semantics or the or the meaning of number 1, the numeral 1 is same with the number of your thumb, right. So, 1 means tipun that is the thumb and 12 means not, not means the year. So, these are the different ways or these are the different styles of, of uh, getting the number system. So, when we say um, how many words or how to find out the words uh, or what are the different ways of word formation rules as far as the numeral system of various world's languages are concerned. So, there are different ways and each language is different in that sense or each language might be considered or might be kept in one category or one type and some languages might put in the same type. So, typologically different languages they follow different approaches to, uh, to talk about their number system, ok. Um, and uh, then how do the operation happens and then multiplication, subtraction, there are there are also different ways different languages follow um, different styles. Um, I do not think there is much important for us to know uh, these things in detail, those who are interested you can always refer to the book. So, what I am going to do now, I am going to go back to the um, to the numerals. So, since we are talking about the numerals here, we will find out what is what kind of generalization we can we can uh, draw or what kind of generalizations we can find out or we can uh, we can design or we can talk about as far as existence of numerals or structure of numerals because i told you 
how many numerals are available or what is the existence of the number system in certain languages and how this number system is structure uh, is, is uh, kind of what is the structure how has it been created or how has the structure been as far as the numeral system of uh, numeral system of languages are concerned ok. So, um, uh, we will start with the generalization 18 here. So, 18 general 18th generalizations say it, the generalization number 18 says that most but not all languages can form an extensive set of numerals. So, not all languages have an extensive set of numerals. For example, um, Guana is a language which um, this is an Ara, uh, this is an uh, Arawakan language of South America. So, let me write here Arawakan language of South America. This language does not um, have a, have an extensive system. This has very few numerals. Okay. So, the numeral system it varies from language to language okay. and and what is how do you how do you mean by very few they have only 5 numerals 1 to 5 that is it ok. And another language like Piraha that is also um, an interesting language Piraha uh, is a language which this is this is in uh, this is uh, spoken in some parts of Brazil this does not have any numeral no numeral here ok. There is absolutely no number system right. On the other hand we have languages like English ok, English has multiple like the number system is quite wide right. So, um, but at least you need to remember uh, these two languages Piraha and uh, um, and uh, Guana. So, these are the languages which are in Ara uh, Ara Arawakan language in South America very few numerals and Piraha does not have any. So, considering there is a there is a wide set of variation as far as number system is concerned, we uh, we should not put all languages um, in one type or one category. So, considering languages have both single morphemic and multimorphemic uh, uh, numerals we need to find out or we need to we need to generalize what sort of solution or what sorry what set sort of statements we can make as far as uh, existence of numerals are concerned. So, uh, you need to remember no most but not all languages can form an exist extensive set of numerals. So, that is the 18th generalization. So, how about the 19th um, this is the set of uh, and from 19th to 22nd I believe these four they are based on the structure of numerals. 18th the, the prior one the previous one is based on the existence that means all languages may not have exist extensive set of numerals. But if you move to the next generalization we will get an idea how the structure should look like ok. So, uh, now since we understood that ok the existence of numerals that is not um, the same across languages. We will now move to the structure of uh, structure of the numerals and what are the generalizations associated with it. So, uh, the 19th generalization would say that all languages have some monomorphic numerals ok. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 these are all monomorphic ones. So, um, the concern here is that you would never find any language which does not have any monomorphic numeral. Rather all languages will have something or the other as far as morphem like one morphem or monomorphic numerals are concerned. So, that is the structure. So, all language remember 19th generalization all languages have some monomorphic numerals. 20 the two most common bases in numeral system is 10 and 20 ok that is the generalization 20. So, the most common ones 30, 40, 50 that would come later, but all the languages or most of the languages will have at least two common bases or two bases that is 10 and 20. So, that was about the 20th generalization. What does the 21st generalization say? It says 
um, one of the four fundamental operations. What are the four fundamental operations in the numeral system? Addition, subtraction, multiplication and inverse that is let inverse of multiplication is division. So, addition, subtraction, multiplication and division which one is the inverse of what? The inverse of addition is subtraction, the inverse of multiplication is division. So, let us see what does the, uh, the next generalization say about these operations. So, one of the four fundamental operations additions and its inverse subtraction and multiplication and its inverse division the existence of either inverse operation implies the existence of both direct operations and the existence of multiplication implies the existence of addition. So, these are related to the mathematical like how, how we studied in school. So, the, the, the generalization says that if there is at least one inverse operation is there in any given language that would imply that the direct operations are also there. So, that means if there is subtraction there must be addition, if there is division there must be multiplication. If the uh, inverse operations are there then the direct operations are also going to be there. The other way around may not hold true. Some languages might have where that they have addition but no subtraction, they have multiplication but no division we are not sure about it. But at least what thing we are sure about the presence of subtraction implies the presence of addition, the presence of division implies the presence of um, the, the presence of uh, um, uh, multiplication right. That is one thing. The other thing is that the existence of multiplication implies the existence of addition. So, that means, if a certain language has a function called multiplication then it will surely have the existence of addition. Without addition multiplication is not possible ok. So, there could be some operation where there is addition, but no multiplication, but there is multiplication no addition that is not possible. So, that is what generalization 21 would say read it carefully you would understand all of the all of these generalizations are coming from Greenberg 1978. And what does the 22nd generalization say? It says if numerals are formed by addition there is a tendency for large numbers to have the larger addent precede the smaller right. So, uh, let us say um, we are we are getting some numeral by addition let us say um, I, I would give you the Hindi example uh, there is something called chabis. Chab, chabis means 26 in Hindi and ch means uh, ch means 6 bis means 20 ok. So, if there is a language where you are forming or, or a particular number has been formed by addition then what is the tendency? The tendency is that the larger number precedes the smaller ok. The smaller number would come first then comes the larger number. So, when it is chabis or 26, so 20 and 6, so 2 is here and 6 is later. So, chabis that means ch is here, bis is later. So, in, in most of the cases the it is not in all in most of the cases the larger addent precede the smaller. So, Hindi is the uh, best example for that. So, that was about um, these generalizations uh, were about the number system ok.